What's up guys and welcome back to day two of the four to eight swap in this 1993 white hatch and made some pretty good progress yesterday. These are actually going to be two back to back working days on this car because I'm trying to fight the weather and it's supposed to be maybe around 55, maybe high of 60 today. And I want to make sure that I can get this engine bay painted with this weather because it's supposed to go down like highs in the 40s for the next almost week so if i can get the bay painted that means the paint can cure and i can keep working away on everything else that i need to work on so that's going to be the task for today is pulling this motor out made some really good headway last night everything is disconnected with the exception of the transmission cross member and the drive shaft is still in there and probably i might just cut the drive shaft with a sawzall and keep the yoke in there to keep the fluid from pouring out the back when I pull this motor out. But that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna get this motor out, probably pressure wash the bay real quick, prep the bay out, spray it, and it'll be ready for the 5.0 motor to go in. So as you can see, collection of parts are still around everywhere. There's a bunch of stuff just laying there from last night that all came out of the engine bay. So everything from the AC to the fan to the air intake box and all of that other good stuff. I will pull the radiator today. You guys can reuse this radiator. In fact, you can reuse the radiator. You can reuse the alternator if you want. You can actually, I believe, even reuse the starter on these guys as well. Need to double check that, but I think you can. So in case you guys are wondering, power plant, let's talk about it real quick before we get pulling that motor. And see here, I started cleaning up this wiring harness last night some. Still got a little ways to go for the undercar stuff, but, you know, wrapped, taped, cleaned, all that good stuff. And I'm going to go into details about why this harness here is so important for the swap, because this is a 92 slash 93 harness only. And this connector right here is the most important connector of them all. We walk over here, the lineup of motors across the back wall here. I've had this guy sitting here for a while, freshly rebuilt, 306, and pretty much ready to rock and roll. It's got pretty much all stock internals in there, just rebuilt, so it should be reliable and all of those other good things. And you can see we've got newer injectors in there, new tensioner, new water pump, some underdrive pulleys and billet, and there is the T5 that belongs with the car. That might need a pressure wash real quick because it's pretty filthy. And I believe there's the clutch, transmission mount, a couple other miscellaneous things there. In fact, I think I see the bell housing hiding back there. So we got everything we need sitting right there on the stand in terms of the motor and the transmission. And like I said, it's been there for a while because he thought he was going to put it in to what is now the donor car. Um, and that car was just too wrecked and uh, compromised. Like, here we go. It's starting to look like a proper parts car now. Uh, what else do we need to do? Five speed pedal swap because this car is going to uh, from automatic to a five speed. So we need to get that done and get the fuel system in here. So I want to route these fuel lines today. I'll give them a quick wipe down now, guys. This isn't one of my typical builds per se like i'm not trying to clean every single last nut and bolt and paint everything and get everything like perfectly pretty so to speak um, this is a functional swap you know for a lot of you guys out there that just want a driver or that are going to daily drive like this is a kid's first mustang well technically that was his first one so this is the second one but this will be the first one that he has on the road so it's more the function over form so we're going to make things look reasonable but we're not trying to under like detail the underside of the car in this case again i'm just trying to show you guys how you can knock this out properly you know with all the right parts and from fuel lines to brakes and all that other stuff so anyways let's um let's get this cherry picker set up i'm going to get underneath the car and probably cut that drive shaft and we'll undo the transmission mount we should be able to yank this guy out
All right, guys, there wasn't too much to see underneath the car there. I literally cut the drive shaft with the Sawzall right behind the yoke, so that, that way all the transmission fluid will stay in. I disconnected the transmission cross member, which is actually bolted in a different place on a four cylinder. So I will go over that with you guys once we get back underneath the car. And disconnected the shifter linkage off the transmission and the wiring stuff for like your reverse switch and pulled the Speedo cable assembly out which also has the speed sensor on there so all that stuff has been disconnected there should be nothing now with the exception of these two heater core lines are sitting right here so i'm gonna grab some pliers we'll get these two disconnected we're gonna get the cherry picker set up here and we should be in a position to pull all of this assembly out All right, guys, so here is our engine bay. The dirty work is pretty much over. Now we get into clean work and cleaning, so that way we don't deal with so much dirty and fluids and everything else. So motor's out back on a pallet back there, and gonna go ahead and now spray the bay down. It's really not that bad. It's pretty damn clean in here, to be honest with you guys. One thing that we're gonna have to do is remove these four cylinder style motor mounts. So same deal, 13 sixteenths uh nut on the back side of the k-member and then there's this sneaky little i think that's a 13 or a 9 16 um get that off and then these plates will come off in fact maybe i'll zip those off right now while after i spray everything down so that way stuff is soaking maybe i can clean up a little bit of this stuff in the driveway at the same time so go ahead spray this down get those mounts off i plug the hole back there so that, that way we don't get water into the interior of the car and we'll be ready to get this thing all detailed up. So let's get at it. All right, guys, so I got most of all the loose items out of the engine bay, things like the wiper motor, the bolts that hold on the brake lines across the top part of the firewall, all of the little clips that hold the wiring harness on, the bracket for the AC accumulator, things like the charcoal canister loosened off the condenser in the front here. I'll probably drop this um, hood release mechanism off of this bracket. Starter solenoids gone, battery trays out, all of that good stuff. Uh, master cylinders off the booster. Not too concerned about getting some overspray on the booster because, well, that's going to get swapped out anyways. So what I'm going to do now is go over everything with this purple scotch pad, get everything scuffed down. Then I'm going to go through and mask everything up, pop out some of those rubber grommets in the back um, that uh, things like for the speedo cable. And we'll try and mask and make sure we don't get too much overspray there. Again, guys, this isn't like a perfect car here. This is going to be a driver, but it's just one of those things that the motor is out. And the factory did a very poor job at getting paint coverage on the inner strut towers and inner aprons here. So it just makes sense to go over all of this stuff real quick, get rid of all this color of rust and whatnot here, right? So we're going to get that all scuffed down. We'll spray some paint on it and it'll look that much better before we start putting all of our swap stuff in here. So we're going to go ahead and get scuffing. All right, guys, you got to uh, be careful. There is just a sharp little piece of metal sticking out from where self topper was and actually cut me pretty good. So I went inside to wash that portion of skin off. I got some uh, liquid bandage on there. 
Now I'll get a real Band-Aid on there. Yeah, it actually uh, cut me open pretty good, so I'll put a uh, rubber glove on here. There we go. Pretty happy with uh, the result here. Not too bad for the old outdoor. That is an industrial single stage uh, gloss white. It's the same Moore MRO four in one. I did shoot a bit of primer down in a few spots first, just that I wanted to make sure that, you know, some of those areas that looked uh, a little rough, got some pretty good coverage first and then laid this down. Not clear coating it guys. This stuff is, um, I call it clear coat, or sorry, I call it uh, powder coat in a can. So there's a few little overspray spots, kind of inevitable. I'll wipe those down with some thinner and they will be good to go. But we got this painted before the cold weather is coming in, which is the most important part. So like I said, let this uh, tack up, give it maybe about 30 minutes or so. Then I'll start unmasking everything. And from there, I got to get organized because there is stuff as shown before all over the place and we got rain coming tomorrow. So uh, maybe, just maybe if I can beat the rain and beat the cold that's coming, maybe what I'll do is I'll run the fuel lines, get those up in there, then maybe get the gas tank mounted in the back. And then that way uh, that'll clear up some of the stuff that's uh, on the side here and just kind of makes us uh, one step closer. So pretty much next, I do need to go into the organ donor car. I need to get the five speed pedal assembly out of there. Um, I do have another brake booster from the silver car. So that'll probably go in here because I don't like the looks of the brake booster that's in that one. And we'll get that swapped over from there. Pretty much is uh, get the motor and transmission in and uh, get all our wiring sorted out and we should be good so there you have it i don't know what time it is like i said if uh three full days what i said i started around 10 o'clock this morning i did take about an hour break 352 so call it maybe five hours into it today if i do the fuel lines get the fuel tank in um that'll be pretty good i got everything unmasked in the engine bay Looking really nice in there. Really happy with that. And I just finished pulling out the inner fender up here on the passenger side because I want to try and get these fuel lines run in there. So they go down along the passenger side of the body in a five liter car. And I'm going to try and kind of maneuver them in like this and then get the fuel filter assembly and everything else. In reality, I could have this stuff disconnected here but I'm gonna try and get it all in one shot and um, get that intertwangled in there. So let's see. really sucks when you're fighting daylight and daylight savings I have an opinion of and I'm not going to share it because 
I'm sure lots of you guys probably feel the same way about it. But anyways, um, fuel lines are run and now I'm going to blow them out towards the front with compressed air on a nozzle. Just like that, just to make sure that there's no dirt or debris or anything in the lines. They should be fine because I had them taped off, but you never be too careful. Last thing you want is, you know, something going in your fuel rail or in your injectors. So I've got the main line off the fuel filter right here. So blow that through. Um, and then, you know, the fuel filter obviously do its job here. Then we'll blow the return out and yeah, I'll plug that in. And then we should be able to get our gas tank back in here and I took the vent cap um, I replaced it because we left the vent line that was in this car but the rubber was gone there and I also swapped out the filler neck because this was all rusty and the one that was in this car so it's kind of the nice thing we get to uh, pick the items that are the cleanest and the best for the swap when we're doing this so I'm gonna blow these lines out and then we'll probably go ahead and try and get this fuel tank in here and we'll be using the connectors that were already in this car because they, they are in really good shape. If you remember, this one was all um, pretty much non-existent on the other harness. So we'll be able to use these and that'll be that. Alright. Alright guys, so I forgot to paint the straps for the tank. And it's getting cold outside. So I'm expediting the uh, paint job here. Until uh see if fumes are burning off. So Bake that paint right on there. Nice little trick with the uh, Seymour MRO. There we go. So, by the time I wrestle that tank up in there, it should be good enough to handle, I hope. So, that's where we're at. I am actually quite impressed. Managed to get those fuel lines in there and blown out fuel filters installed got our breather tube and everything else just sucks that this tank is um pretty much full so i did wipe it down and everything else and um, everything looks clean it all looks good so let's try and get the jacks under here get that filler neck in and we'll uh turn it and rock it and try and get it in gonna be a wrap for day number two and we got quite a bit done when you think about it we pulled the motor the transmission we pulled everything out of the engine bay prepped scuffed everything down painted that all nice and white so that was all taken care of we installed the 5.0 fuel lines front to back blew them out got the fuel tank with the functional pump that came out of the donor car here. Fuel filters all hooked up. So fuel system is good to go here, which is awesome. And I think that's about it. Cleaned up a lot of the stuff that was sitting on the side here. If you guys remember, I was complaining about that. Still undecided the uh, control arms, although they're factory are in really nice shape here. And I'm deciding whether I'm just gonna, you know, forego those control arms and bolt this diff into this car so that, that way i can keep it a roller it really sucks when you have stuff and it doesn't roll and it uh, sits like that but it's all good i'll get that sorted out but we're all cleaned up and the hood is closed so everything will be good and protected from the elements because we are going to get rain tonight and it's going to get cold tonight so everything is going to stay where it's at now and that's wrapping up day two i originally said i wanted to get this done in three days and like three full long days so i think i was already at eight hours for day number one day number two here we're probably at eight hours 
So ultimately, I think this is going to be a four day ordeal because I could have had it done in three, but painting the engine bay, you know, taking all that stuff off the firewall, the inner aprons and prepping it all up and spraying it all and all that stuff that takes time. So I had a good amount of hours into that. If I didn't have to do that, I would have been way further ahead. I probably could have done like the booster, the pedal swap and gotten that knocked out all out of the way and pretty much ready at this point after doing the fuel lines and everything else to pretty much just dump the drivetrain in. But yeah, painting the bay took some time up. So give me about five hours additional. So we'll call it three days, five hours. Let's see if I can get it done. And that's like to get it running and moving under its own power. That's not like shakedown and everything else. So bear with me. We'll get this done. Hopefully you guys are enjoying it so far. It does suck when it gets dark outside and, you know, I'm trying to deal with light and fighting sunset and everything else. But anyways, till day three.